Hi, I'm Soot. You might know me by a few different names. Scientists call me fine particulate matter, PM2.5, or even aerosol. But I've been working on my personal brand, and I'm leaning towards black carbon. You gotta say it like that. Black carbon. The thing is, I don't get enough respect around here. I know I'm not the main character, but I'm still a pretty big deal. It's greenhouse gas this and greenhouse gas that. But when are you gonna talk about particulate matter like me? I say the time is now. That's why I'm launching a new campaign to build brand awareness for black carbon everywhere. Hear me out. Black carbon is formed when fossil fuels, wood, and other biomass burn incompletely which is always, it's the inevitable byproduct of combustion. Primarily, it comes from sources like household cooking and heating, transportation, and agriculture. That includes everything from open fires and wood-burning stoves to diesel engines in cars, trucks, and construction equipment. And wherever trash is being burned, you'll find black carbon. It's kind of my guilty pleasure. All of these sources combined are producing tons of particulate matter and doing some serious damage to the climate. In fact, after CO2, black carbon is the second most significant pollutant driving climate change today. Thank you, thank you. It's nothing, really. Let me tell you how it's done. Once suspended in the atmosphere, black carbon absorbs incoming solar energy and converts it to heat. It can also impact cloud formation, altering regional weather and rainfall patterns. These particles remain suspended for up to two weeks before rain or snow condenses on them and falls back down to the earth. When black carbon lands on white surfaces, like ice or snow, it lowers its albedo, basically how bright and reflective the surface is. So instead of reflecting sunlight, the particles absorb it, melting the surrounding snow and warming up the air. How's that for efficiency? climate change, and melting glaciers in one shot. Bam! It's one of the main reasons the Arctic is warming up twice as fast as the rest of the world. But black carbon doesn't just fall on ice and snow. To be honest, it's kind of hard to control the landing. When it falls on vegetation, it impacts the health of entire ecosystems by increasing plants' temperatures and reducing their rate of photosynthesis. And the other thing I'm tough on is you. Fine particulate matter air pollution is the leading environmental cause of poor health and premature death all around the world. Leading. Did you hear that? It means first. At just 2.5 microns or smaller, these particles are so tiny that they can invade the lungs and can even enter the bloodstream. Black carbon has been linked to all kinds of health issues, from chronic bronchitis and asthma to strokes, heart attacks, and cancer. At this point, you're probably wondering if there's anything you can do to stop me. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. To clean up household energy, you'd have to replace traditional cooking, lighting, and heating with clean burning stoves and replace wood stoves with pellet stoves. Replace heavy duty diesel engines and trucks, buses, and ships with alternative fuels like hydrogen, biodiesel, and battery electric. You'd also need to drastically reduce open burning. That means banning open burning of waste and supporting farmers to adopt no burn alternatives to ready their fields for new crops. If that sounds like a lot, you're right. You've got your work cut out for you. But I will admit, like all great villains, I do have one fatal flaw. It's my short lifetime in the atmosphere. I can't survive up there for very long, which means your efforts to reduce black carbon emissions can have an impact right now. Honestly, it's a little embarrassing. But to make those changes, you're gonna have to start talking about yours truly, black, black carbon. carbon. So the next time you bring up climate change, I expect to be part of the conversation.